uh, engine performance one test six. Engine performance one test six. All of these are functions of the air intake system except A, silence the intake noise, B, clean the air, C, act as a flame arrester in case of backfire, and D, all of these are functions of the air and filter system. I think C is hogwash. Yeah. Actually, they usually will. How many times have you heard induction backfire on an engine that was running lean or something? You know, pops back out of there. If you didn't have a manifold there, you'd catch fire to the whole top of the motor sometimes, right? Well, it still has one though, so it's not resting anything. Well, I mean, I guess if you, if, if it in terms of a, if keeping it contained within the intake. Well, it kind of puts it out because you you got air trying to flow back into the engine, so it's going to put the fire out. You know, you know how they put out all well fires. Like if you got an oil well fire that's just got gas, it's spraying out of the ground, just blowing up there. They back up to it with a great big drum of explosive, and they blow it out. Boom! Do you do that? And it shuts off. I mean, I, you know, it, it makes a vacuum there, and all of a sudden you got gas, but there's no, you know, that's what red and air would do when they light them off. If you had like a 750 pound drum of explosive, he'd back up there and put it right next to that big fire, you know, and the light off. Okay, so all of them are functions of the air filter system. Look at there, they messed up on that question. Which of the, uh, the following statements, oh, incidentally, on an air intake system, uh, the air intake system is designed so that everybody gets an equal amount of everything. In other words, every cylinder gets an equal amount of everything. And if you'll notice, your exhaust gas recirculation system is set up, they go to great pains to set it up so that every cylinder gets an equal amount of uh, whatever it is, like if, you, if it's exhaust gas flowing in, uh, the fuel injectors are put right at the mouth of the, in, of the, of the uh, right behind the intake valve, so everybody gets the same amount of fuel if the injectors are all doing their job equally. Okay, the, the following statements are correct except paper air filter elements may be cleaned by using compressed air or tapping the filter on a hard surface. Eh, you don't wash them with water. Most of them trap particles larger than 10 to 25 microns. Port fuel injected vehicles use air filters mounted away from the engine which that's true. You know, uh, port fuel injectors means the injectors are right there behind the intake valve. The ones in the throttle body, they had a round breather just like a carburetor. And uh, on the, uh, the paper air filter elements, um, they have to be a little bit of resistance there if, uh, if it's going to stop anything. Now what is a micron? Anybody remember? Uh, It's not hard to remember once I tell you, although I told you last semester. It's a millionth of a meter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a thousandth of a, of a millimeter. A millimeter is 40 thousandths of an inch. If you break that millimeter up into a thousand parts, one of those parts is a micron. And what they do is they make these little white plastic balls that are a millionth of a meter in diameter, a thousandth of a millimeter. Oh, a thousandth of a... Um, of a millimeter. If you take a millimeter, a if you take 40 thousandths of an inch and break it up into a thousand parts, Think about how tiny that is. That is one micron. All right, so if you were going to measure like the, the mesh of a, of a filter or something like that, you know? All right, so how big is each one of these holes in that mesh? All right, if you measured across here at the average of these, and it was like 25 microns. See, like that's 25 thousandths of a millimeter. It's like a, this is like a microscopic view of an air filter. Yeah. See that? The little particles of dust can't get through there, but air can. Yes, yeah, basically you're doing a filter. And the little uh, spaces that the air can flow through, uh, if there are 25 microns, that means that there's 25 microns, you know, in other words, if you measured that, it would be 25 thousandths of a millimeter. So a micron is a thousandth of a millimeter. A millionth of a meter, because there's a thousand millimeters in a meter, and a thousand microns in a millimeter. So you keep going down smaller and smaller and smaller. There's, are you all confused by what I'm telling you? You know what I mean? I mean, you're, a millimeter, millimeter's tiny, you're gonna break it up in a thousand. Okay, everybody's familiar with it now. So when you hear about a, a, how many microns a filter is, the, the less microns it is, the finer the filter is. You get me? The cabin air filter on these Mercury Sables and Ford Tauruses and a lot of these other cars are 25 micron filters. It's filtering the air about like it would going into your engine. 
and all. So the following statements are correct except A, passenger vehicles with throttle body injection typically use smaller intake manifolds than racing vehicles. That's true. Throttle body injection intake manifolds place the fuel injectors on top of the throttle plates. That's true. Fuel injected from a throttle body injection system must stay above 100 feet per second to remain atomized. Now, that's not true. That is not correct. Technician A says thermostatic air cleaner systems use a vacuum motor to control the heating of intake air. You know what that is? You know what a thermostatic air cleaning system is? You've seen that before. You know what it is, Mr. Webb? All right. It's time for me to draw another picture. Well, so you guys have seen this. All right, we got a little snorkel out here. And we got it going in here. And we got an air cleaner. All right? Is that a good drawing? Is that a good on it? Yeah. All right, right here, the air is having to travel down this snorkel, and the air filter's here, right? Now right in the middle of the top, you'll have one or two wing nuts. Am I familiar? Okay. Now I know you guys have seen this. You got a little pipe coming off the bottom of that. And there's a paper hose. And it's going over here to a little stove on the manifold. And this is just a piece of sheet metal stuff on the manifold. You know, in here you got a hot manifold. But this thing can get air. Alright. Now right in here. You're basically going to hinge a flap, and this flap right here is going to be like that. All right. Now then, on top of that manifold, you got a little diaphragm with a vacuum line. We still together? All right. You got a little link hooked to this right here. That little link is grab that manifold. All right. Coming through here, you might even have seen it. You'll have a vacuum line going here, and you'll have another vacuum line going to engine vacuum. Now right here is a little sort of a bimetal vacuum valve. It either vents that vacuum to the inside of the air cleaner, or it sends it over here. See where I'm going with that? All right. So if the air is cold coming in here, if it's really cold, that really can cause it to stumble and hesitate and cut up and all that kind of stuff. All right, so whenever that vacuum is, when this is cold, that little bimetal strip lets the vacuum go over here. Now, what does that do? It right. causes that diaphragm to do this, to pull that up. Now you're not getting any air from here. It's coming up this way. I thought colder air was better. It is, unless you're, it's causing you problems. What does cold air do to atomized gasoline? Mm. Cause it condense, right? Now, you know, you're talking about a lot of dynamics here, but in, on carburetors and even on throttle body injected, and on some of your, uh, like on my Jeep, uh, well, not my Jeep Cherokee, my Jeep Cherokee's no one, but on some of the early Jeep Cherokees, that had the, like the four liter um, straight six, that one it was originally built by John Deere. You know, the engine was built by John Deere tractor plant, by the way, initially when they first started making those four liter Jeep Cherokees. They had one of these, and on some of the Rangers, they would have this thermostatic air cleaner set up on some of these port fuel injected engines. Because whenever it's cold, they want and it's a basically an emission thing. Because if the gas is not atomized and you got, you know, just droplets of gas going in there, then you're not going to have complete combustion. Or you're going to actually have hydrocarbons that you didn't want. You're going to have gas that didn't burn all the way. You may have some soot. And also, is you're not going to have all the power you needed, and it may you rough idle, stumble, hesitation, that kind of thing when it's cold. But think about this. What if this system malfunctions, or somebody hooks the vacuum lines up wrong, and this stays shut? You're pulling hot air off of there all the time. What do you got then? you got labor knock. See, because of the increased temperature and stuff. All right, now do you understand how thermostatic air cleaners work? Okay. Now then, we got a... Uh, Let's see, which question are we on? We talked about the, we talked about this, one of these, and I thought they're fired up out there.
It's a thermostatic air cleaner system. You use a vacuum motor to control the heating of the intake air. Technician B says fuel must be in liquid form, which is wrong. It's got to be a vapor. Uh, the more tightly vaporized it is, the better your combustion is going to be. Number five. What was number two? Number two. Um, paper air filter elements may be cleaned using compressed air or tapping the filter on a hard surface. You know, that's not really the way you're supposed to do that. You're actually supposed to take it out of there. But we went through this little drawing right here, uh, Daniel, of how the uh, thermostatic air cleaner worked a while ago. Okay, now then, uh, let's see. Which statement is correct? Um, with port fuel injection, fuel is injected directly into the combustion chamber? Well, not really. That is not a correct statement. According to the answer key, that is, but the fuel is not directly injected into the combustion chamber on a port fuel injection engine. Um, but, see, that's the boy, they got that answer just as wrong as they can. Uh, port fuel injected vehicles mix the fuel and air charge in the intake manifold, which they basically do that. Throttle body injected vehicles don't require the heating of the air intake charge. That's false. Uh, but B is the one they're claiming is right, but that's not right because port fuel injection, with port fuel injection, the, where is the fuel injected? In the intake. Well, right behind the intake valve. Yes. It's not directly into the chamber. Direct injection. It's got really high fuel pressure, like many thousands of pounds, and it squirts it directly into the chamber, but port fuel injection doesn't. That's the one that gives you good efficiency. Yeah, They're, they've been doing that in Europe for a while Which in some one? cars. Huh? Which one was five then? Oh, five was actually, well, if you want to get it right according to the stupid answer key, it would be B, but that, that statement is not correct. I've got to make that qualification. That's one of the reasons I like to be in here to go over these questions with you. Don't neglect to read these chapters, though, because you're going to have to go through them anyway whenever you do your open book uh, written two? final. Huh? What was two? Uh, two was basically that you can't clean the, I mean, A, you're not supposed to clean it by beating it on the floor, basically, or blowing it with air. Okay, port fuel injected vehicles. Wait a minute. Which of the statements? This is six. Um, a, long, which statement is correct? Long intake runners are good for low RPM torque. That's true. Some engines use a variable intake runner designed to improve engine efficiency. That's true. Short intake runners are good for high RPM horsepower. That's true. All of the above. This this question is exactly like the uh, 3.5 or 3.7 on that Dodge Charger we worked on. Exactly. That's what you're. That's what he's talking about. And the first car I ever saw that on, and I, there must have been another before that, was the, the SHO Taurus. It came out in uh, 89. Yeah. And it had that. Uh, intake runners that were variable. Technician A says plastic intake manifolds are lighter than aluminum intake manifolds. Well, that's obviously true. Technician B says aluminum intake manifolds protect the fuel injectors from heat better than plastic. That's oh. false. It's the, in, the injectors are going to run cooler in a plastic manifold than they are in an aluminum manifold. And weight is one consideration, and those other ones, it's a little, you know, cheaper to build. And the cool thing about those plastic intake manifolds is, if you have to buy an intake manifold, you can get one from Dorman. You know, Dorman, these plastic injection molders, they can make them plastic intake manifolds. And uh, the old, uh, of course, other people made the aluminum ones too, but they cost a lot more. It's easier to make a plastic intake manifold than it is aluminum one. And it'd be cheaper too. Yeah, there's not a lot of there's machining and all that, and it's just aluminum, plastic cheaper than aluminum. It's just with the uh, plastic ones, some of them are uh, two piece, so you can get just the uh, the half that you need. Yeah, upper and lower intake, but that, they're that like I don't the uh, aluminum ones are set up that way too. Uh, the following statements are correct except uh, well, let's see what the first one is. A EGR is only used when the engine's running faster than idle speed. That's true. Uh, B, EGR exhaust allows, ga uh, excuse me, allows exhaust gas to be drawn into the intake air on cold engines, right? C, EGR works to reduce NOx emissions. Or D, some engines use valve overlap instead of EGR to control emissions. Okay, um, you don't have EGR flow on a cold engine, so the one that's not correct is B. EGR doesn't flow on a cold engine. No reason for it to. 
because what do you do? And you're trying to cool the combustion chamber so you don't make knocks. And if it's running cool anyway, you ain't going to make any knocks. Technician A says EGR systems are more effective in reducing emissions if the exhaust gas is cooled before entering the intake air. That's true. Technician B says EGR valve controls the flow of exhaust gas into the intake manifold and is often mounted on the intake manifold. That's true. Both those guys are correct. And like I say, it'll typically, uh, on most engines, not all of them, but on most engines it'll be putting the exhaust gas right in behind the throttle plate so that it's carried and distributed evenly to all the cylinders. On some engines, it's carried through a little passage right there in the intake manifold with a little tiny quarter inch or six millimeter hole right there at the mouth of each intake runner. And what the problem is with that is, those little holes, some of them will get stopped up and you'll wind up getting more EGR on some cylinders than others and it'll cause it to misfire when you crack the throttle and EGR starts flowing. I had one that every single one of them was stopped up except number four. And whenever you'd get, crack the throttle, it would start dropping number four because all the exhaust gas recirculation gas was going into the only hole that was still open. And something that really threw me on that one was whenever I would, I said, when you crack the throttle, it starts skipping immediately. But when you let it out, it wouldn't skip. It wasn't spark plug. It wasn't ignition related. Uh, and what I wound up doing was I was checking. I would listen to the injector with my stethoscope. And when it, uh, almost immediately, as soon as it started dropping that cylinder, that injector would go silent. And so I checked, and sure enough, the signal coming from the PCM to that injector on that skipping cylinder was dropping out. And I said, well, this PCM must be killing the, you know, cylinder must the injector, uh, the driver for that injector must be getting hot in that PCM and dropping the injector. Well, that wasn't the problem. The strategy was, if you see a misfire on cylinder number four, turn off the injector to that cylinder so we don't cook the catalytic converter. We don't want to squirt gas in there if it's not firing. And so, see, I, ha I heard a silent injector, but that was not an effect. It was a cause. I'm sorry, it wasn't a cause. It was an effect. It wasn't causing the skip, it was because of the skip. You get me where I'm going with that? It was, that's, that's not complicated. All right, you got that one there. And that concludes test six, but we've got to get test, six, test seven done. I was calculating the days, and we were going we're to run out of days before we run out.